now that you have learned the basics of cloud computing and you have some idea on storage services of AWS, let's go ahead and try to have a feel of how the computing platform works in AWS. Let's see how we can do some basic operations on AWS platform, how to have the communication between local machine to AWS. So guys, we are going to learn about basics of EC2 standing for Elastic Compute in Cloud in AWS, okay? What are the important things we are going to cover? What is Elastic Computing and what is EC2, okay? Then we are going to understand how to create an EC2 instance. EC2 instance means how to do that in AWS console, okay? Then how to log in to that instance that we have created. Then we will see how to use PuTTY and WinSCP since many people do not know how to use that. Then we will see how to do operation in EC2. Then we will see how to stop the EC2 instance so that we do not get charged extra, okay? And here using PuTTY and WinSCP, we will do the communication from local machine, which means from my local computer, I will communicate with AWS server that I will create now. Let's see very, very interesting video. Watch till end guys, lot of things to learn, okay? First of all, what is Elastic Computing? So by the name only, whenever the Elastic word comes, right? So you should understand something that shrinks, okay? Shrinks and expands, okay? Something that shrinks and expands just like Elastic. So in terms of computing, what will be the meaning of shrinking and expanding? So the meaning is if I want to do a small work, okay, my resources used will be small. If I want to do a large work, my resources used will be large. I no need to worry about setting up that, that resource. My resource will itself become small, itself become large as and when I need it, okay? This property is known as elastic property. Now, this computing offering that AWS gives you, elastic computing, is that kind of offering where based on your need, your server, your server will expand or sync based on how much ever you are using and you will be charged according to that, okay? You will be hearing about this keyword known, known as EC2. Let us try to understand what is EC2 basically in simple common layman's term. This is nothing but a virtual server in cloud. So I will write here guys, virtual, okay? server don't get confused with many jargons here and there let's try to understand with simple keywords virtual means what virtual means something which you cannot see or which you cannot touch it is virtual okay which means if i tell you can you touch your own computer yes you can touch your own computer can you touch ec2 no why because that's virtual that's not real that's not physical that's virtual okay virtual server now what is a server a server in simple terms you can think of something which has some storage and some processing capacity okay so what will have a server it will have storage and processing capacity in cloud because aws is giving you that facility hence in cloud so every time i say ec2 you think it as a server which is on cloud and which aws is giving you on rent Okay, every time you take a server on rent, you will need a couple of things. Amazon will ask you a couple of things. Number one, Amazon will ask you which operating system you want. Okay, so guys, when you go to purchase a computer, right? Uh, you know, you decide which, which operating system you want. You want Linux or you want Windows or you want Mac or whatever you want, right? Then Amazon will ask you how much of capacity you want in terms of space. How much capacity you want? Okay, how much capacity you want? These are the two main questions Amazon will ask you. And if you say, for example, I need 128 GB of capacity, obviously it will charge you more. And if you say I need 8 GB of capacity, obviously it will charge you less. And in terms of OS, Amazon gives you all the different kinds of OS, be it Linux, be it Mac, be it Windows, all kinds of machines you can create. So I will just tell you one more time so that you are not confused. EC2 means I'm going to create a server in AWS. I can have the operating system of my own choice. I can have the memory space of my own choice, but everything comes at a cost, fine? I will go in console and show you now. Let's go ahead and see how to create a EC2 instance. EC2 instance means creation of my own server. So I'm going in AWS guys here. 
and I'm saying EC2. At the moment I say EC2, you will see virtual servers in the cloud. The definition I give you, simple definition. Click on this, click on this. And if you can see here, there is an option of launch instance. Okay, let's go ahead and create launch instance. Launch instance means I'm trying to create my own server. So here, what name I should give guys? Let's say unfold, unfold DS server is my name of the server, okay? Now on the right hand side guys, if you see, it tells you what AMI image it will use. Amazon Linux to kernel image, by, de by default it will use this. No need to do anything here. I don't want you to pay some money because many things we can do for free, okay? If you see virtual server type is T2 macro. Now what is T2 macro? Let's try to understand here. In your first year, 750 hours of T2 micro or T3 micro in the regions in which T2 micro is unavailable, instance usage on free tier per month. So I don't want you to pay any money. Hence, we will go with whatever is available on free tier only. So in the first year, 750 hours of T2 micro we can use. Okay, so we will keep virtual server type as T2 micro only then new security group it will create then one volume of 8 GB means it will give you 8 GB of space fine let it do whatever it is doing by default just I am paying attention that you guys should not end up paying any money so unfold server I will write here I will write here Amazon Linux AWS the, the default thing and here if you can see free tier eligibility is there if you click on this right these two things are free tier rest of the things if you use you will pay money don't do that Okay, whatever is default, let's go ahead with that free tier. Fine, it is giving you architecture 64 bit. That is what you want. You do not want any lower architecture or, you know, if your preference is ARM architecture, you can take it, but I will keep it, you know, whatever is default. Instance type T2 macro, I told you. And if you use it beyond, you know, uh, allocated limit, this is the charge. Now, one important thing, guys, whenever you are creating a virtual machine, you will need some user ID and password to log in, right? So it will tell you key pair name. So what key pair name you want? I will go here and create a new key pair for this particular machine, this particular server demo that, that I'm going to launch. Okay, create new key pair. I'll click in and I will say unfold, unfold DS key pair. Okay. And remember here you should say dot PPK file because we will be using putty for this. Okay. And I will say create key pair. Create key pair means it will get downloaded. So if you see it is it is in my downloads folder. Unfold DS yes, key pair. I will show you how to use this. First, let's create the machine. Okay. It got downloaded in my downloads. Just remember this. Then come here, keep everything which is default. And I will go here and I will say launch instance. Okay. Now, if you see creating security group, creating um, whatever in the background it is creating. Now I will go to the instances and I have here two instance. One is my web server, which is which I created back. That, that's not what I created now. I created this unfold DS. OK, so this unfold DS, what is the status now? Key pair is unfold DS key pair. OK. And I will go here and I will try to start this server. So instance status, it is already running. Okay. So if you see here, it is running. No need to start. By default, it takes some times and then it starts running. First one is not running. It is stopped. Second one is running. If this is running, let's see some of the properties of this server that we have just created. So one thing important here is public IPv4 address. Public IPv4 address means this is the address through which my server is known to the world. Okay. Second thing is, if you come to security, right, you will see that some of the security rules are getting created, which we have not created, but it will is created for us. Okay. Come to storage, guys. And one important thing, if you remember from the um, storage class, if you remember, right, I was telling you, Whenever you create a EC2 instance, it will attach a EBS kind of volume. So see here, EBS kind of storage it has attached. Okay. And volume ID is this. And you have been given 8, 8 GB of space. Okay. What is the device name? This is the device name. Don't bother much about that. Just understand EBS type of volume and 8 GB of space you have given here. You have been given here. Okay. What, what else is important here? Status check. It is kind of running. Okay. So what I'm going to do next, guys, now you have a server ready on the AWS uh, system. Okay. 
and if it's not a free tier eligibility probably your money will start you know your bill will start generating so let's go ahead and try to use this server for using this server you have to have a have an app called putty okay and in putty you will go here and say p u t t y or what you can do is you can go and search here uh, putty download okay if you search putty download right it very first image whatever it gives you download that that is your putty software but i already have that so let me go here and open putty okay so this is how putty looks like guys for some of you who has not seen putty before this is how your putty will look like okay if you remember we have downloaded the credentials for this server so if you want to connect to your server then your host name is your host name is whatever is your public ipv4 address so come here come to details this is your public ipv4 address right copy this copy this come to putty come to putty and say ec2 hyphen user ec2 means ec2 instance we have created right at this this is the server i want to connect okay but we need a user id password which, which means credential also click on connection click on auth and click on credentials okay once you click on credential then browse and give your in the downloads folder unfold ds key pair is there right give this okay and then you can say open it will give you a, a message warning message like this you can say accept and it is authenticating with the key we just created okay so you can see now we are inside amazon web service server that we created okay so if you say who am i it will give you ec2 user which means you are ec2 user and if you want to see what is the list of files here you will see nothing because there is no files here okay now let's go ahead and try to put some files in this from the local machine okay from the local machine i will try to put some file there so how to do that there is another tool known as win scp okay win scp you can just go here and say win scp download the first link that comes you download it win scp looks like this win scp also i have in my machine so win scp looks like this okay in win scp also here you will you will see it will ask for a host name username and password so in host name i will give the same host that i have copied i think i need to copy again let me go here and i i need to copy this okay copied in the host name you need to give this in e user you remember what was the user ec2 underscore user okay but it also needs the credentials to log in where from it comes from the key value pair go to advanced okay go to authentication okay and scroll for uh, i mean browse for your unfold ds key pair once you do this say okay and then say login so what will happen is on the left hand side what you see is my local computer so if you see on the left hand side these are my documents my personal documents my nps payment receipt my my uh, old resume something is there okay on the right hand side what you see here is your amazon ebs volume which means your server suppose i want to put my nps payment receipt to my server so you just can do a drag and drop like this okay now this nps payment receipt is on amazon ec2 of uh, ec2 instance if you want to ensure that run the ls minus lrt one more time ls minus lrt and you will see that one new file is here nps payment receipt this is the new file that i put just now so how many files are there now only one file if you want to move something more from local machine to remote machine just do a drag and drop okay what happens aman nine years data science also moves to the server now see this there are two files now so i am doing this knowingly slowly slowly guys because i know it's not very easy for many people to uh, get a feel of local machine versus server and how to pass files and how to uh, you know write some basic linux commands that's fine guys now um, let me show you how to do a basic operation in uh, you can say 
uh, EC2 instance and how to get the result back to the local. So let me go here and try to create a simple file. I will say vi my file dot txt. Okay. So I have opened a uh, vi editor. I will go press insert and write something. Hi, this is my demo file to show EC2 instance. Okay. And you say escape and you say colon wq. So if you do this, your file gets saved. If you do cat, you can see the content of this file. So go here and see cat. You will see that whatever I have written, it is here. So now I want, uh, I am expecting this file will be there in my server. So if I go here and refresh, right, I am seeing a new file and I want to transfer this file to my documents. I can very easily do that. So in my local machine in documents folder, this came. So what you learned from this guys, you learned that operations we did on cloud. What operation? Creating a file, updating the file. So if I'm doing a heavy operation, I will be charged more, but I'm using free tier and I'm doing a very minor operation. So I will be charged absolutely nothing and doing operation there and taking the result back to my local. So this is how I did. This is a simple way of doing this. Things are not this simple in production guys, but um, Many people are kind of new to this. So very simple, simple operation, baby steps I'm showing you, okay? Let's go back to, to the, uh, you know, uh, notebook and try to understand what is left. How to log in, how to create, I told you, how to log in, I told you, using putty and any uh, win CP, I told you, doing operations, some basic operation, I told you. Now, one important thing, guys, stopping your EC2 instance, if you're not using it, otherwise you will be, uh, I mean, there is a risk of getting charged, okay? So come here and, select this this is already selected okay this is already selected so go here and say stop instance stop instance so it will say choose the stop button because obviously uh, let's say some operation is running on and you are you know uh, stopping in between it should not happen like this so this is stop now this is stopped means you cannot use this until or unless you restart it okay so uh, but you are you are you know, uh, safeguarding yourself for unnecessary billing. So let me go here and recap one more time. What is EC2? EC2 is nothing but a virtual server with one operating system and some space given to you. Uh, free tier eligibility you can create, but it will charge you if you go beyond the limit. Then creating, logging in, win SCP PT, doing operation, stopping, all these things we covered, okay? So if you see here, at the moment I, I stopped there, right? It says connection to this timed out, okay? because I stopped this. So right now I want to do any operation, it will not happen. Okay, so I hope you are getting this idea guys. In my next video, I will bring to you more things that we can do on EC2. Thanks, thanks everyone guys. And please, please give me a thumbs up and please like uh, the video and subscribe to Unfold Data Science if you have not done. See you all in the next video guys, wherever you are, stay safe and take care.